uh, so thank you for joining Hollywood Times, James. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, some of these uh, beautiful, like basketball related um, art that, um, that, you know, you, you, you create. Yeah, uh, totally. Can you hear me, by the way? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, so um, I started painting, uh, drawing when I was around th uh, third grade. Third mm -hmm. grade. Uh, my father was an artist and my uncle was an artist. Um, my father was more, he went to school for uh, uh, illustration advertisement, but then he, uh, he actually ended up having to go to the military uh, because of the war, uh, Vietnam. Um, mm -hmm. But then my, uh, my uncle remained an artist uh, his whole life. Uh, he passed uh, about a decade ago, but every summer he would come and visit uh, the home uh, his hometown, the town I lived in, which is a small town in uh, Tennessee called Tullahoma, Tennessee. It's like close to where they make Jack Daniels, tiny little uh, town about an hour south of Nashville. So um, he would come down the summers to visit my, uh, his, my grandparents and I would watch him paint and everything. And he noticed I had a talent because uh, in third grade, I spent a couple of days drawing this print that my mom had on the wall of the living room of this little girl. It's like a Victorian painting of this little girl um, in, the, in the corner that's like pouting. Um, next to her dog. And um, I showed it to my mom. My mom's from, um, my mom's from uh, Panama. And uh, she's like, no, Jimmy, you don't draw this. And I was like, yeah, I drew this mom. He's like, no, you lie. So I drew it again. <laughs> and so she was shocked. And so she, uh, she told my uncle about it. And that's when he, he was just like, you guys have to start get, putting him in drawing classes and everything. And so from there on, I just kind of stuck with it. Um, and uh, uh, ended up going to uh, Savannah College of Art and Design for illustration. Um, and then by the end of, uh, met my wife there in Savannah, Georgia, she, um, she was, uh, studying, uh, photography and, um, I was kind of burnt out with illustration. Um, also like SCAD was, SCAD was a great school, but it also, it brought in some big, uh, big names of illustrators. And, um, every time I would ask about like, you know, do you also exhibit in galleries and everything? And all the illustrators were like, no, we like, we can't consider ourselves painters. Like painters were seen as like, you know, gods in a way. It was very interesting. And I was kind of like, oh, I think I want to be a painter. <laughs> so I decided to, um, to pursue that after school. I did illustration thing. I did a lot of illustration gigs, but um, I just uh, want, mm. I thought that painting was more of my passion than illustration. Wonderful. Um, and so what led us to this point where um, there's kind of a specific focus here with um, basketball? Yeah, so uh, that one's very uh, a long, out, drawn out story. But um, my um, uh, I I wasn't really into sports until um, a basketball until uh, my my I was watching my nephew who's growing up in um, in uh, outside of Cleveland area. Um, uh, that's where my wife's family's from, Ohio, uh, Akron area. And by the age of like two, he was obsessed with um, basketball. It was really, I've never witnessed anything like it. He went to, he went to, he took naps with bat balls and he just had this like amazing ability just to be, he was like tiny little sportsman. It was amazing. And watching him grow up uh, one day when he was about five or six, I took him to um, like, there's this basketball gym. Um, and uh, there's this game that we were playing. Um, his name's Hayden, by the way. Um, and, and Hayden uh, in this game, I don't, I don't know what it was called, but basically you're, there's two uh, trampolines and then there's two baskets be behind each player. And so you're supposed to like bounce up and then like shoot and try to, you know, uh, score behind a player as you're like way up in the air. I mean, I was just terrible. And this five-year-old just like demolished me and he was just, just laughing. And I remember like, I remember his little body jumping up and, and for him, it was like 10 feet up in the air. And it was just this like focus that I never witnessed in a child. And he was just like these, making these like baskets. And he was just laughing. He's like, Uncle, Uncle Jimmy, you're the worst player. I was like, yeah. And I was, and I was just like, and it just, just to see that a human being can be born with this capacity. So I just started watching at that point. Um, and uh, Hayden's favorite, his, his favorite team, of course, is the Cavs. And so um, a couple of years later, my, bro my father-in-law was just like, there's this guy who's playing outside of Akron. He's the next uh, Michael Jordan. And I was like, whatever, whatever, you know, yeah. Uh -huh. And um, he's like, you can't even see his, his games. He's in high school and people are like flocking and that turned out to be LeBron James. And so he saw one of his games. And um, from that point on, I was just like, I was like hooked. And so years, years later, actually about six months ago, I was watching this video 
um, of my, that my sister-in-law sent of my, of, of Hayden playing. And he's, he's like in high school now, he's unbelievable. And as I'm watching it, I get a, uh, I get a text message from um, uh, Robert Novogratz. Um, and I've known them for many, many years. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we met them through my sister-in-law about 20 years ago and I've done a lot of projects with them. They're amazing. And so he's just like, hey, he's like, I have another project in mind. He's just like, um, I, I found these cards and he's like, what do you think? Because I, I did have a couple of sports stuff with him a couple of years ago. Um, and I was just looking, I was like, this looks amazing. And, he, and because these cards look kind of like funky and they're, and it is the end of the like, the, like, you know, it's just back then, we didn't really know how to like photograph athletes. They're all like kind of awkward and everything. And the colors are super saturated. And I was like, this looks awesome. So that's where the idea came from. And we, we started collaborating with that. Wonderful. Um, yeah, that ended yeah, up being so, cool. yeah. so these are uh, life size or super size. Uh, well, actually, the actual originals are only six by 12, but then okay. we, we thought like, oh, it'd be awesome to blow these up. So we scanned them in and then we blew them up um, to be like large prints um, to sell. Got it. So wh where can we view this, these, the, these uh, blown up super size uh, versions? Well, they were at uh, the Nova, the House of Novogratz. I think they're still up this month, but if not, you can go to the, the Novogratz website and they're still available there. Um, uh, and the originals are uh, also at the House of Novogratz, um, their pop-up store um, in Venice Beach. Oh, wonderful. And are you based in Los Angeles? Uh, no, actually, I'm in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Oh, wonderful. So for the New Yorkers, um, are they um, able to see this or do they have to fly out to L.A.? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have to fly out to LA to see the originals. <laughs> very, very cool. So, um, what um, I know, what's you got this nostalgic uh, element to it, uh, where you go through the years, where you know you have uh, Michael Jordan and other you know stars over the years. Um, what informed that selection of who is considered a legend, like you know LeBron or? Um, or, you know, Shaq or any of these, like what, what was your criteria for picking the, uh, the different basketball players? Well, Robert and I, uh, at first, their original was 10 all-stars um, from the tops uh, uh, um, um, playing cards. And then we kind of just collaborated together and came off um, on the cusp of these other players um, and also wanted to incorporate more women players as well. So it was kind of like just we were we were just having this discussion and then we just kind of came up with our favorite players in the last, you know, uh, 15 years, 20 years. Understood. So there was some uh, some artistic uh, license there. Yeah. Play. Yeah. And yeah. also also it'd be really awesome to see contemporary players in that type of um, style of those those top the top playing cards. The old school. Yeah. So the actual art was. Um, you know, the, your, your influence um, and you've studied under uh, Coons. Tell us a little bit about that, um, you know, how that has um, affected this uh, specific line of artwork. Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, when I um, left school um, in, in Savannah, I, uh, you know, we were like, let's go to New York, but it took, took some time to do that. So we, we eventually, we ended up moving to Pittsburgh and did a huge project there um, and then to Ohio. And then we were just like, this huge project kind of um, fell apart. We we're working on this 70, 75,000 uh, square foot mural um, and uh, it fell through. And so we're like, let's go to New York. <laughs> so uh, we decided to pack up everything and go. And then um, uh, my wife was looking through classifieds and she's like, there's a, there's a painter looking for, uh, uh, for assistance and didn't, they didn't specify who it was. So I sent in my, back then it were slides actually um, still. And so I sent in my slides and then I got a call from um, the studio and said, hey, I don't know if you're familiar, uh, this is uh, of Jeff Koons, but we're looking for some assistant painters and um, we love your work. You can want to come in for an interview. And I went in there and I, and I was hired. And back then um, the studio was in the far uh, um, west side, West Chelsea um, in New York. And so um, I was with him for, I was there for about eight years and um, just learned to hone in my craft because the paintings are like super, super realistic paintings. And so it was kind of like um, honing on my skills and met a, a great community of artists, which I'm still friends with there. And just witnessing how, uh, you know, one of the most famous artists created their work was a big, um, a big honor. Um, and 
yeah, it was, it, it was, I mean, it was full-time, you know, 40 hour a week job. And sometimes when there were shows, it was, um, you know, we were there for like seven hours. <laughs> it was like insane. But um, yeah, so I was there for a while and, and I learned a lot of tricks of the trade there as well and, and met some amazing um, uh, collectors and celebrities would come in like every week to look, to look at, you know, the, the studio and everything. It was really, really cool. Awesome. So um, do you have a full-time uh, gallery or studio that uh, showcases your work um, in New York? Actually, right this year, I'm going to, I'm looking for um, a gallery. Most of my work with ours has been word of mouth and commission based. Wonderful, wonderful. So tell us a little bit more about your other work um, and, you know, what we can expect from you in the future creatively. Uh, well, I'm, I'm working on a series um, of uh, hung embracing paintings, um, which uh, actually in the next um the next catalog of the new American paintings though I was uh, I was featured I will I'm featured in which is a big I, I, it's a great um, artist uh, catalog magazine that comes out um, every uh, couple months so if you want to see some of those you can see it the new American paintings but um, yeah these these paintings um, that I'm working on were inspired by like screenshots uh, that I've been collecting for the last I would say uh, eight years of in movies I would just my wife and I would be watching a movie and there would be the scene um, where someone would be hugging and I, and I would screen capture that and I'd be like, that's an interesting image. And then that's how I work. Like I have ideas that kind of like, they just kind of uh, organically just form slowly. And so um, uh, the first piece I did was a scene from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's the last scene where uh, Jack Nicholson um, and uh, I forgot Chief, the, the, that's the character. I don't know if you ever saw the movie, they're um, embracing and Chief's trying to break Great him out. Movie. Yeah, and doesn't just realizes that, oh my gosh, like my friend's gone. So I thought it was very interesting to take that scene and to, to uh, extract the background. And so just have these, these two um, figures hugging in this void of space. So you're taking, the, they're taken out of context. And I also thought it was interesting is that like, you know, I'm 40, 42. And so I remember like the movie being a classic when I was, you know, that came out before I was born, but I remember my parents like talking about it and everything. But for some people, when they look at these paintings, they'll have, they're like, oh, I know that movie. And they have a, they'll have a context that they'll project onto the piece. But then a lot of people, as I'm getting older, like a lot of people don't know that movie. And they're like, oh my gosh, what is this from? And, and I don't know the movie. And so um, I did another piece of the scene, uh, The Godfather 2. And it's the brace where he's just like, it's called, I, I, um, you broke my heart. And it's that iconic hugging scene. And, you know, uh, that movie is, you know, in my generation, it's, it's a masterpiece. And, and so when that, sh when that piece has been seen, a lot of people, including my wife, didn't know where it came from. I was like, oh my gosh. And so I was asking her, what, what do you see in this hug? And she's just like, I see, I see a heartbreak. And so it's just interesting that she kind of already, just by looking at that hug, she kind of read what the moment was without seeing the movie. So I'm very interested in so this, this type of narrative that people project on these, on these hugs and these embraces. And also the context changed because I started painting these in 2019. And so then, then COVID outbreak, um, outbreak, the pandemic came. And so it changed the context of the pieces um, as well because we, I mean, now on this third wave, we're still seeing like this, you know, certain countries going back into lockdown. And so it, it it, there's an urgency that was also created with these paintings of where people just longing to be together again um, and not being able to. And so I thought that was very interesting how this uh, tragic pandemic kind of also met, the, the, like the artwork was kind of like a catalyst for this, this moment in humanity as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, any, um, I'm now very curious, what other movies uh, did you screen capture and, um, you know, that, um, are there any other great moments like this? And do you always remove the background, kind of like uh, the background we're looking at with you, this yeah. blur, you can <laughs> put whatever you want behind it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, right now, um, you know, the, this with this series, there will be no background. I don't know what's going to be in the future, but yeah, there's, um, I did, um, um, what's the one with, uh, sorry, um, Aquafina, um, Sorry, my brain's kind of going blank. It's the movie, a uh, huge movie where she um, she goes to China to say goodbye to her grandma who had cancer. Um, 
it'll come to me. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, there's uh, 12 Years a Slave. That's what I'm working on right now. I don't know if you ever saw that. Um, uh, it's the last scene. I have of, not. Okay, it's an incredible movie, Academy, Academy Award winning movie. Um, it's the last scene where um, he gets re reunited with his family. It's a true story where he gets kidnapped in 1850s and becomes a sla enslaved for 12 years. And so he gets found and then he gets reunited with his family. Um, I'm also currently working um, on a scene from uh, Schindler's List <laughs> um, and The Big Lebowski. And so there's a, there's a lot coming up. <laughs> okay, Big Lebowski is one of my favorite movies. Which scene is it? <laughs> uh, it's the scene. Um, it's the scene where their uh, their friend died, and they release the uh, the ashes. The ashes in the beach and the <laughs> yeah. Cliff the, yeah. And he gets embraced. The dude gets embraced. So that scene. Um, and also, that is a great scene. Yeah. I was hoping you would say that the Chinaman that peed on his rug, but. Um, <laughs> 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 maybe that will inject uh inspiration for another one but yeah. yes that's a great scene nonetheless yeah. awesome. the, movie, the farewell that's it the farewell the one with the aquafina was in have you, i don't know if you've seen it. it's an incredible i'm not i love aquafina I, I highly recommend it she that movie you know she was kind of like the the, the, the comedic star in previous movies with that movie she just like you have i mean she's unbelievable with with how she's acting but yeah the farewell highly recommend it Wonderful. That's on my list now. Now, um, do you have any other sports related projects? I mean, I love this whole theme of the favorites from the last 15 years in basketball. Are you are you going to touch baseball, football? Actually, there's a uh, I did a series is available um, that you can see on my website um, of other basketball stars that uh, another collaboration I did with um, Robert Novogratz um, years ago um, with uh, um, we were redoing the sports um, uh, agent um, agency in New York, and they wanted to redo their whole place. And they contacted the Novogratz, um, and he contacted me to do I think eight paintings I did of um, all, uh, stars that uh, that um, Andy Warhol shot in the eight, uh, the sixties, seventies, and eighties. And so you know he's obsessed. He was obsessed with celebrity. So when he would meet like um, uh, uh, Muhammad Ali um, um, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, he would like shoot these uh, Polaroids of them. And he considered these Polaroids his, um, his sketchbook. So he thought he shot thousands of Polaroids. And so we were kind of looking for another kind of vintage um, look. And so um, I was in Strand, this huge bookstore in New York. And I was just kind of like trying to get some ideas. And I saw this giant Andy Warhol book and I, and, you know, I bought the book, flipped through and I was like, oh my gosh, these are iconic. And so, um, yeah, you can check that out on my website. Um, yeah, well, I think we're going to do uh, maybe another project. We'll see what comes, but um, um, it'll be awesome, whatever it's going to be. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I, I noticed this uh, very um, deep, um, also love for nostalgia. Tell us a little bit about where that came from and, you know, also capturing kind of like moments in history. I just get that kind of, um, you know, whether it's uh, basketball, whether it's film, whether it's Andy Warhol, tell us a little bit about where that that came from. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a huge um, history fan, and I'm you know when I'm in the studio, I'm listening to uh, like podcasts about you know any any type of history, um, uh, Western history, uh, you know war history, and everything. So, but when it comes um, when it comes to like Hollywood and celebrity, uh, I was as a kid, I grew up watching a lot of television, um, and so. Uh, and I think a lot of that was inform has informed my personality. Um, and so, you know, I'll be like just walking down the street and something will remind me about a movie I saw like when I was a kid, Chevy Chase and some kid, you know, in uh, Master Lampoon or something. And so that's just how my brain is wired. And I think that has really influenced like the, uh, my artwork as well, just um, being raised um, with movies and TV as a kid. Um, and also, uh, just being attracted to like the historic aspect, um, because I'm just, I just love history. That's wonderful. Um, okay. So the man behind, uh, the talent, uh, when you're not busy creating the greatest artwork, uh, what do you do for fun? Um, I know you're married, you have kids. What's, uh, what's, what, what did this Christmas look like for you? Did you get some rest? Did you get some hot chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well like we just like everyone else we were assuming that like oh it's gonna be a normal christmas and so we had plans to go visit family and everything but then suddenly my my son he's four so he's not old enough to get the a vaccine unfortunately so we had to cancel all of our christmas 
plans and just kind of just hunkered in and stayed. My, my sister lives in the city. So we, she came over. And so it was just, we we're decided to let's just hunker down. But um, yeah, I, uh, I'm a huge, I'm a huge biker, um, uh, avid, avid reader. Um, I just love, uh, um, I love my huge uh, movie lover as well. But unfortunately with, with, you know, the pandemic, we haven't been to the movies in a long time, but um, yeah, yeah, really into uh, meditation as well. I, just, I don't know, um, constantly reading. <laughs> I don't know what else I did to go with that one though. Um, but yeah, yeah, just, just hoping that, you know, this, this will pass and get back to normal life and I can go, um, we can go back to uh, going to the movies and everything else. Absolutely. Now, do you have any final words that you want to tell our audience and for my write up and also the best place where we can find you plug your website and your social media? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just that uh, uh, you can find my work at, um, at my website, uh, James Seward or James L Seward .com. Um, and uh, my hash my handle on Instagram is uh, pajamas p a j a m e r z, uh, <laughs> um, which is also my uh, my my artist nickname. Um, yeah, just uh, wait, wait. Where did that nickname come from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was uh, last year, I was working at at Coons. I was just uh, uh, during break. I was just uh, um, you know uploading it um, going on to Instagram because everyone's like you did this is actually you know this is back in 2011 everyone's like you gotta get on Instagram I was like what's Instagram and so I was just like uh coming up with my um uh looking for some pictures and everything and I was just like I don't want to put James Seward that seems kind of boring and uh, like my uncle who's a, a great artist we have the same name and so for many years um he he did a lot of Christian work he was he was a Christian he he was he was a reverend um and so for years, people would be like, can I buy this painting of Jesus from you and everything? I was like, sorry, wrong James Seward. <laughs> and so uh, I was just like, I need to come up with a different name. And so um, I was just like, pajamas. And so, because I was just looking through some pictures, making um, some old like vintage pictures of people uh, wearing pajamas. And then I was like, James pajamas. And so it just stuck, from, <laughs> it stuck for me right there. That's um, hilarious. That's yeah. a great story too. Yeah. <clears throat> How's your uncle? Is he still making um, great Christian artwork? Yeah, uh, he passed uh, back in 2011. Um, yeah, yeah, he was, he was much older, but yeah, he was he was a huge inspiration um, as well with my father. But yeah, I was kind of <clears throat> finding a way to kind of separate our our names. <laughs> but even to this day, if you put in James Stewart, his work comes up with this, with uh, um, his Christian work. One one of the portraits I did of him, um, I did a portrait of him years ago. Uh, he was in a studio um, and he was like a pack rat and one of the portraits i did of him is called uh, documentation of uncle jimmy it's just like really photorealistic painting of his of his face like really cropped in but in the background is his studio which was a complete mess and he wouldn't let me shoot him in the studio because he was embarrassed so i had some, my, his wife shoot the shoot the studio and then i put the pieces together but in one of the paintings in the background is of jesus walking on the water which became a real painting which is available at his old gallery which is kind of really um interesting <laughs> That is so cool. I'd love to actually check that out. Where can I see uh, the Jesus walking on water painting? Can um, I find I'm, that online? Um, yeah, just put in James Seward, um, and you'll um, his Somerset Gallery. It still it still exists, and so you, you the, his prints are still available, and so you can see that that um, image of Jesus walking on the water. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, any final words, James? Thanks for this great interview. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just really, really excited um, to uh, get these uh, these new this next um, this series of uh, embrace paintings. So just have everyone look out for um, my show coming up um, this year, and I'm really excited to. Not sure where it's going to happen yet, but it's it's going to be big. Awesome! And then we can just follow you on social media and your yeah. website, James L. Yeah, Seward. Seward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Well, have a wonderful. Um, rest of the week and happy new year's and new year um, you too. i'm sure we'll be in touch james all right take care thank you so much looking forward okay. to reading it absolutely bye. take care bye now